If there's something that aggravates me to no end in Excel, it's the default number formats. I hate this. I hate that you can select these and then click on the comma and it gives you 0 0.00. Why would I want that? I hate the dollars as well because the dollar is over here and quite frankly, I think the dollar just takes up clutter and you can always tell it's a dollar just from reading it. What I like instead is something like this and something like this where you can do Ks and you can do in one shortcut to no decimal places. So I'm going to show you how to do these either by default or with very, very quick actions that are not built in. And we're going to go through numbers, dates, and percent. So let's go into the first one, which is not actually an Excel setting, but a computer wide setting. So if I go to my control panel and then click this one, change date, time, or number formats, number formats, additional settings, you can have your computer's default for how to do with numbers, how many decimals in here. If I go to currency, I'm going to choose zero as well. Point that I noticed is that you have to do zero in both numbers and currency, either, otherwise neither of them work in Excel. So I'm going to press OK, OK again, exit this. Notice that you can't get to this through the modern Windows settings. It has to be through the old style control panel. So exit out of that. And then if I click on this and click on this button, watch what happens. There you go. No decimal places. Dollars does the same. And I actually got that tip from a friend of mine, Mark Selby, who I was teaching an Excel course to. And he assumed that I knew this trick, but I didn't. So I'm still learning loads of stuff in Excel. Thank you, Mark, for that trick. So if you like that trick, you're going to like a lot more. My name is Dave and I'm and I have tons of videos on my channel about Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, PowerPoint, Word, Teams, Zoom, the using tech at the workplace. I'm covering it on my channel. So what's going on behind the scenes with the change that I made? If I select this and I click on this number format, then in cell styles, it's choosing this one. If I didn't make that change in control panel, it was choosing this one. Uh, if I do it for dollars, for example, let me do it here for dollars and I choose the dollar one there, then it's formatting it as this currency style. But you know what? I already said that I hated the currency style and I see almost never any use case for it because the dollar is always implied. So instead, I'm actually going to modify that to whatever I want. So I'm going to go to cell styles and I'm going to right click on currency. I'm going to choose to modify it. And here I'm going to do format and I'm going to go to a custom format. I'm going to choose my K value that I really like. So the way to do that is type in here hash comma hash hash zero comma and then in speech marks a k like that and then semicolon for negative numbers we're going to do the same thing but we're going to enclose it in brackets and then we're going to do a semicolon and a zero like that and press OK. So that makes it look like this. And by the way, if I want decimal places, I can have those after the K. And here's what's interesting. <laughs> Whenever I select something and I now click on dollar, it gives me that, which is quite good. So that is how you can do it through the cell styles. And you can customize more of what you want this way. Uh, I actually got this trick from Win Hopkins with the Access Analytics YouTube channel. So recommend checking that out because it's a really cool trick. Next up, we have shortcuts and I really love these keyboard shortcuts for speed up tricks. So you have control shift and then the numbers one to six plus this symbol, which is accent grave or the tilde, which is actually the one to the left of the number one. And then there's a couple more extras here. <laughs> so control shift and this will be general number formats. Control shift one will become a style. But notice that even though I changed my settings, so this comma is zero decimal places, it still gives me decimal places there, which is annoying, but we will come out with a workaround. Time is two. I don't think I've ever used that. Three is date. This one I use a lot and we'll come back to dates later, but I love how it's three characters for the month, which means that it's not ambiguous whether you're using European style or US style dates. And then currency is four. As I said, I never particularly like using that because the currency is implied. 
percent. I use this quite a lot. Control Shift five, and then exponential. Control Shift six. I never use that. Uh, a couple of bonus ones. Whilst we're talking about it, Control Shift seven is outside borders, and Control Shift and minus is remove all borders. So that's all well and good, but there's a couple of things I don't like. For example, that the number style default control shift one gives me that. I want a keyboard shortcut that does what this does. I don't care. And I'm gonna make one using a macro. So you select the cells that you want like this, and then I'm going to go to the view tab, and I'm going to choose macros. Click use relative references, because that means it's gonna work on the cell selected, not I5 to I13 on every sheet. Then go to macros and record macro here. Give it a name, so I'm going to say comma, no decimal, no spaces allowed. Give it a shortcut key. I'm going to do shift and C here because this is an unassigned shortcut. Go for something with a shift, but avoid F, L, O, P, and U because they are already used by something else. And make sure that you're storing this in the personal macro workbook because that will mean it'll do it on every single file. Then press OK. And then go to the Home tab and choose this one. And that's it. Then you can stop recording. On the bottom left, you can click on this. And there it stopped recording. That means that whatever things you have, you can press Control shift c and it can do that there. You cannot undo with a macro. So Control z will not work if I want to undo that. If you do want to edit your macro, click on the View tab and choose Unhide. Press OK, because that's your personal macro workbook, which is this. And then go to Macros. And I have a lot here. So then from here, you can edit it. And if we see what it's doing, um, without going into VBA, it's just doing the comma zero style that I set before. So this is a great one because it will work on every single Excel file you have. If you are going to use this, then be very careful and choose to hide it um, before you move on. Another way that you can add a macro is with the quick access toolbar. This is something that I use quite a lot. I've actually got this one to put it into millions, which is another kind of shortcut if I want to. Uh, these are all very, very small numbers, but let's look at some other ones like this. If I choose this, this will turn them into millions, uh, or this will just be in thousands like that. So I've got both of them. So one thing that I love is freeze panes, because freeze panes is usually three clicks away. One, two, three. So just give that a keyboard shortcut. Um, this one, if I want to click, or if I don't want to click alt and then the number comes up and three. I've had this for eight years because three sounds like freeze. So I do that all the time. But you can do that with macros as well, which is what we've done here. So right click and customize it and then go to quick access toolbar. And here we're going to choose macros. And it has all of these personal XLSB means from the personal macro workbook. So this one that we just assigned, comma no decimal, click on that to add it. Let's put it here. And if you want, we can modify it and change the icon. So I don't know what a comma would be. Maybe something silly like that. Press OK. And then select it. And you can access it in two ways. You can either click on that or, again, undo doesn't work, or you can Press Alt button, and you can see that 5 is next to that. So Alt 5 will do that. And you can do them even in rapid succession, just Alt 5 together. And it will activate those really, really quickly. So far, we've covered general, comma style, dollar amount, this one, K for thousands, and also M for millions. And I'll write down the code in the description below if you forget how that's done. Dates. Oh, I hate the way that Excel does dates. So these two options that are in here are useless. I hate this one that is day, month, year. If you open this up and your computer setting is European and it's month, day, year otherwise, because sometimes someone American is reading 
one file or it just gets it wrong. I hate this. And what's more than that, I think this is useless. You never want to spell out the whole date that could either be as long as this or short as this. It just makes absolutely no sense. What I love is having this, which is three letters for the month. Best way to do that is Control Shift 3, the shortcut that I showed you earlier. If I am going to have the day of the week, then what I tend to do is I would format this, but I would use something like this. And before that, press DDD space three letters. Three letters is always enough like that. Press OK there. And percent, percent, I think Excel gets, um, it doesn't do them with decimals when you press this. This is in all of the formats. Power BI does, and it really annoys me that the default is with decimal, but Excel doesn't do that. But let's go the whole hog, and let's say that you want, as soon as you start a new Excel workbook, for absolutely every number to have a comma and zero decimal places, to effectively be the cell style, this one the holy grail that we wanted to work on. So I'm going to go to File and New, Blank Workbook. Now I'm going to select all, and I'm going to go to Cell Styles and comma zero. And then everything, even with a decimal point, appears like that. This is exactly what I want. This is going to be the default for all of my workbooks. So I'm going to delete that and deselect everything. It's a completely empty workbook. And I'm going to press Save As. And I'm going to choose that this is a Excel template, Excel TX, this one. I don't want this location that comes up automatically. I want to save it so that it's the default for everything. So to do that, I'm going to navigate to the place where it is the default. So here I am in File Explorer. And this works for Windows. Mac is slightly different. But I want to navigate to this file location. So it is this PC... Uh, local PC users, Daben, App Data, Roaming, Microsoft Excel, Excel Start. Yours will be likely the same except for this one, DA Ben. It might be slightly different, but it should be pretty much the same apart from that. That will be your user account. So once you've navigated there, you can right click and copy it. Notice that the only thing in there by default is the personal macro workbook that we looked at before. Go back into your Excel, and here we're going to paste it then this is important. Make sure it's called book. It's not called book nine or something else. It's just called book. Press save. And that's effectively it. Make sure you save and close the file. Then wherever you are, go to control N to make a new workbook and type in any number. And look how it does that. Let's type in lots of numbers. Calls random between one and big number divided by a thousand so that we can get decimals and even though it's decimals it's still showing us like that and if I add some extra zeros then they are big numbers and they are automatically with a comma which is fantastic because this happens for every one of your numbers by default. What is interesting though is that if you go to file and blank workbook then it doesn't work out the way you want. So this number will just be the general style and then it won't keep those changes. You need to do it using the technique that I showed you and then control N for a new workbook. That seems to be how it works here. Now this is almost the perfect solution, but not quite. It works very well for dates. As I told you, I love three characters like this. It works very well for numbers, even aligns, positives and negatives, but text. Text is where it falls, unfortunately, because the first character in the first line is not aligned with the rest. Now, you won't notice this unless you do a wrap text sort of thing, but it is kind of annoying that that happens. But it's fairly easy. You can just select them and make them general or use the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift tilde, and fix that. So to check where the location is for you, I'm going to show you how to navigate to that through here. So first you need to go to this one. Make sure you are viewing hidden. So in view, make sure that you see hidden items. So hidden items are these ones that are kind of not opaque. And then we can go to users and I can go, this will be my username then. And then app data, this is the hidden file, roaming, Microsoft, Excel, I'm used to this. <laughs> 
and then Excel start. So this will be the one that you need to use for yourself. So I hope you liked that video. That was a whistle stop tour about number formats in Excel and getting the defaults to do more for you. If you like this video, then I've got plenty more on my channel about Google Sheets, Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint, Word, Teams, Zoom. If you're using tech at the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So give me a like button and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.